grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us always. Welcome to the Lenten series, Turning to God, Part 1, Conversion in the New Testament. Our human experience shows that there is a warfare in our soul. To Paul, this was a warfare between two opposing forces, which he called the flesh and the spirit. He said, the desires of the flesh are against the spirit, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh, for these are opposed to each other. And again, I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind. For Paul, this was the, the dilemma of the human situation. And he was by no means the first person to see life in terms of internal conflict. The Jews had the doctrine of the Yetzer Atob and the Yetzer Ar, the good nature and the evil nature. As they saw it, every person possesses two natures and everyone is always being drawn in two directions at the same time. It is as if we had in us two angels, the good angel beaconing us upward and an evil angel seducing us downward. The Greeks had a similar idea. Plato describes the soul as the charioteers, whose task is to drive in double hardness two horses, one of whom is a noble and of noble breed, and the other who is the opposite in breed and the character, weighing the chariots down and pulling it to the earth. Here again is the same picture of warfare and tension, always with the terrible possibility of ruin as its consequence. This inner conflict is also described in the writings of the Romans. Ovid uttered his famous sigh of frustration. Video meliora proboque. Deteriora sequor. I see the better things and I agree with them, but I follow the worse. Seneca said, People love and hate their vices at the same time. In other words, for the Jews, the Greeks, and the Romans, the necrosis of evil has fallen on our life and we have to become insensitive to remorse, regret, and repentance, so that goodness is forever beyond our power to attain or glimpse. But the New Testament claims that Jesus has the power to make bad people good and villains heroes. This is the very reverse of the pessimism, the hopelessness, and the despair of the pagans. Pagan writers believed that we are hopelessly evil, but the New Testament shows us that no one needs to stay the way he is. In other words, in Christianity there is a change in power that the paganism almost completely lacked, and that is precisely what we call conversion. So then let us turn to the New Testament to see what it has to say about conversion. 
In the New Testament, the word conversion is connected to the Greek verb epistrephein. In classical and secular Greek, the word epistrephein is a common word. It simply means to turn or to change direction. It can be used of the military action of a commander in wheeling his troops into a new line of attack. Epistrephein also can mean turning a thing upside down or of turning over the earth by digging. Epistrephein can also be used of a person turning to or from a thing. It can also be used in relation to changing one's attitude. Once again, the basic idea of conversion, epistrephein, is that of a change in direction, either in the physical or the mental sense of the term. A turn involves two things. It involves a turning from something and a turning toward something. The essence of the turn of the Christian is that of turning towards God. We may have many attitudes to God. We may be almost completely unaware that God exists at all. Or we may be aware that God exists, but remain completely indifferent to him. We may be so concerned with the activities of the world that for long periods of time we forget the very existence of God. In other words, God is not a real factor in life. Centuries ago, when Longinus was writing on the sublime, his complaint was that the people of his time were lost in money-making and pleasure-seeking. Inevitably, he said, they cease to look up. This is also the attitude of many of us today. We acknowledge the existence of God, but he is confined to the margins of life. As Voltaire said of God, we nod, but we do not speak. It is the attitude of a kind of polite indifference. Or we may even attend the church, fulfill the external obligation to the church, but not allow God to influence our everyday thoughts, attitudes and decisions. We can also have a spasmodic awareness of God and turn to him in a moment of crisis. But when the sun is shining again, we think we can handle life well enough by ourselves. In brief, the common characteristics of all of these attitudes to God is that in none of them he is the dominant factor in life. In none of them do we live in a permanent awareness of God. In none of them we are permanently turned in the direction of God. And in none of them is God at the center of life. Real conversion is a turning round to permanently facing God. True conversion is when the presence of the risen Christ is the very atmosphere of our life. 
sincere conversion is when Christ is the air that surrounds us and gives us the breath of life. Authentic conversion is when we can say, for me to live is a Christ, or more vividly translated, life means a Christ to me. Genuine conversion, therefore, is the state in which life is permanently turned toward the God, just as the New Testament sees conversion as a turn towards God, it sees it as a turn away from certain things. It is a turn from idols to serve the living and true God. It is a turn away from vain things to a living God. Conversion is the turn of the soul from things to God. And the conversion is at the time when we give our life, not to material things, but to God. In other words, conversion is a turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. To turn from darkness to light means to turn from ignorance to knowledge, from evil to good. Above all, we cannot turn to God unless we know that God is love. Conversion comes from the fact that God wants us to turn to him. True conversion cannot spring from anything else than the realization of the revelation of the love of God in Jesus Christ. Conversion, therefore, means a shift of the center of joy. It means that the soiled and dark things in which we once found delight now repel us, and that we make the discovery that purity is more thrilling than sin. This is the turn from frustration to victory, the turning which we cease to be the slave of evil and become the conquerors of sin. It is the discovery that in the power of God, the apparently unconquerable power of sin can be overcome. And let us conclude in prayer. Almighty God and Father, as the season of Lent unfolds, you call us to return to you again and again, as you invite us to reflect on your love made visible in the person of Jesus, align our lives more closely with you through prayer, fasting, and generous giving. Bless our desire to accompany Jesus' suffering here and now in the crucified people of our world with your grace. May we live Lent fully and move the with transformed hearts into the abundant life of Easter morning. And may the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. And have a good day, everyone.